So we had discussed this passage in the last session, right? Uh, the first session, the CR session that we did. So let's quickly recap or let's quickly just uh, write down the understanding of this passage. Anybody would like to share your understanding of the passage? Yeah, I can share mine. Yeah, I can share. I felt that uh, uh, the understanding is that there's a 7% sales tax on most products in a state, mm. which leads to an opposite effect of income tax that income tax has. Uh, income tax is supposed to tax more people with more in, with higher income, but uh, because of the 7% sales tax, it is leading, like it is having the opposite effect of taxing more on people with less income. Okay. <clears throat> Is that what you're saying? But this still tax causes more people uh, no, no, uh, taxes more essentially. Uh, uh -huh, uh, tika, tika, huh. Yes, that is what I mean. Okay, so there is a 7% sales tax on most product and income tax is supposed to tax more uh, people with higher incomes. But this sales tax is now taxing uh, these people, uh, people with lower incomes more. Yeah. Hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, Shivangi, we have not covered anything yet. We are just starting off. We are just recapping that this is the passage we did in the last CR session. Yeah. And how's your health now? I think you were not well in the last session. Uh, yeah, I think I I also lost my voice. It was very bad. You know. It actually took a lot of time. That viral. But yeah, yeah. and kind of it started in the starting of the month and then it got better mm. and then I don't know I didn't take care of it that much uh, I thought I'm better but then it reached the stage where I couldn't speak or drink water and then I consulted the doctor and he said that how are you surviving it's so bad and Achha. okay uh, then I was actually uh, I think the last session that I joined, I was that time on nebulization. So I think that helped a bit and it took a lot of while. I think it's been a month now of flu only, but two weeks were really bad. So last session, I was like, I was not able to speak at all. Hmm. So that's why I was kind of left also because I was like, I had so many medications that I was sleeping all the time. Oh, okay. Now right. I am... I am like way, way better. I can speak. I can just like, I'm not tired and sleep for the time. So yeah, I see. I see. Okay, good to know that. They're still taking medications? No, it just ended on uh, actually yesterday. I see. Yeah, okay, so this is a passage we talked about in our last session, right? So we were just recapping that. You remember? You, were you there in the yes. first? Yeah, yes, sorry. yes. Mm -hmm. So now we are moving on to the question. Uh, so what are we supposed to find in this question? Or let's say what is the meaning of this question stem? What are we looking for in the options? Uh, assumption. Assumption means? Something that the author must have thought uh, while making the conclusion and he didn't write about it, but he thought about it. 
basis to make that conclusion what author is drawing in the last second sentence what is the basis which is not mentioned but author is taking that into consideration okay so how but how would we find that thing how would we find let's say let's say we are looking at an option how will we know that this is the basis on which he has drawn the conclusion it should not be directly mentioned in the paragraph and it should be like a gap in the logical reasoning like it should cover a gap in the conclusion like how how we got to the conclusion it should be that gap which is not mentioned it should it should be something new which yeah. is fine mm -hmm. so yeah uh, and then you are saying it should be covering the gap yeah so in the red, like logical reduction if you see they're just saying that sales tax is there and it leads to taxing people with lower incomes but that doesn't actually like fully correlate because a lot of things are missing in the argument so the author is making a lot of assumptions i i feel here so you just have to find the right one which uh, you know proves this uh, conclusion okay okay hmm so this is a typical assumption question is this a typical assumption question yes no i i'm not sure i think yes uh, the question stem is normal but i think the argument is very uh, like the conclusion the argument it has a lot of assumptions compared to other assumption questions that i've solved that's fine i'm talking about the question type is it a typical assumption or I think that it's assumption. It's a typical assumption question. And yeah. Yeah. What do you mean by typical? Normal assumption questions that we know of. I am not sure, but this is what what I did in the question. Found the assumption. So maybe in the last part, like assumed as a premise, is not means mentioned explicitly in the means question question statement, right? Here it is mentioned as assumed as a premise. That's so it, one thing. So that's fine. So are you aware that the definition of assumption is necessary? It's 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 necessary for the argument to hold. Are you aware of this definition? No. Yes, sir. Others? Yes. Oh, yes. 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 Right. So this is the typical assumption which is necessary. Uh, so when we talk about assumption in general, we talk about a necessary assumption. So by default, assumption is uh, considered a necessary assumption. But here it is talking about a sufficient assumption. It is an which means if if this is true, the argument will definitely hold. Uh, so this is different from necessary again, just I'm not sure how much you you are clear about necessary and sufficient things, but there is a necessary condition, there is a sufficient condition. Necessary means something required. Sufficient is not required. Sufficient just means if this is there, then this is enough for the argument to hold. So here, and sufficient assumption is not an assumption assumed by the other. And and you will see the wording is also like that. The conclusion would be properly drawn. So this will be the conclusion would 
sort of happen from the premise if this is assumed as a premise. It's not saying the author is assuming this. It's saying if we assume it, then we will be able to properly draw the conclusion. So assumption, this assumption will make the conclusion happen. It's a sufficient assumption we are looking for. Normally, assumptions are never framed. Necessary assumption is never framed like this. Okay, first of all, necessary assumptions are always assumptions assumed by the author. So for example, the next question, this author's reasoning depends on assuming which of the following. Uski reasoning depends on, requires which assumption. So it's a necessary assumption we are looking for here. Here we are not looking for a necessary assumption. We are looking for something sufficient. So CJ, is it always the case like whenever we are talking in terms of the uh, author, it is going to be unnecessary and then when we are talking in terms of our assumption, then it is going to be sufficient. Not necessarily, Matlab, I can of course use the same words but make some changes. But essentially we can never say the author is assuming a sufficient assumption. Yogi, how do we know? Basically, the simple point is that we were saying that the author was thinking Okay, so how do we know that the author was thinking about it? So, if we were saying that the author was thinking about it, then the whole argument is junk. So, the author was thinking about it. So, that's why in necessary case, we say that the author is thinking that. In sufficient case, we cannot say the author is definitely thinking that. May or may not be thinking. Ah. Uh, so, first of sufficient ka matlab hai ki ye hone se conclusion properly drawn ho, drawn hoga. Kya kuch or assume karne se bhi properly drawn ho sakta hai? Ho sakta hai. Jaysay necessary assumption itself of ek hi nahi ho sakti na. There could be many assumptions. Similarly, sufficient assumptions could also be many. So if you say that this sufficient assumption is not assuming the author, it is not doing anything else, it will be properly drawn from it. The common theme that is there is both are around gaps. Okay? So if you, if you have a very, if you don't have a grasp over gaps, if you are sort of faltering in terms of understanding the gaps, then you will falter in both the question then if you have a very strong hold over gaps intuitively will understand ki haan, yes I am. but if this understanding is not very clear actually here we are looking for a sufficient assumption in in that question we are looking for a necessary assumption you will falter in some of the questions you have to see even though the word is assumed it's saying the conclusion would be properly drawn if this is assumed. It's not saying the author is assuming anything. It's saying agar hum assume kar lete hain, then the conclusion is properly drawn. Are you looking for something which is around the gap but which will completely fill the gap so that we can properly draw the conclusion. A necessary assumption, which is also a typical assumption question, which we normally talk about. In that case, it is not supposed to lead to properly drawn conclusions. So sometimes you will see the uh, necessary assumptions are extremely mild strengtheners. Properly draw the very far away, but strengthener maybe they are extremely mild strengtheners. The typical necessary assumptions. So, CJ, this is like conditional relationship. If X, then Y, X is your uh, yeah. sufficient, sufficient. and Y is necessary. No, no, no. This is another condition. Sufficient condition from F, if X, then Y, this framework is sufficient. Ka. Mm -hmm. pe if X, then Y, ka hai, if this assumption, then the argument holds. Okay. 
so we can put a uh, necessary assumption as well in that relationship if x then y nahi nahi necessary ke liye wo structure nahi hota this is the structure if x then y is only for uh, sufficient cases okay So I've done a couple of webinars on uh, necessary and sufficient. The recordings are available on my YouTube channel. You can check that out. Okay, thank you. I've spent three and a half to four hours discussing necessary and sufficient conditions. Hmm. Okay. So typically, uh, are you anybody uses negation technique in assumption questions? Yes, sir. You use that. Anybody else uses negation technique? Very rarely. Hmm. Shivangi. Even I, uh, I used to like when I used to like start with it, but now I am actually I was just thinking, am I using it now? And I realized not so much. तो कैसे निकालते हो हाउ डू यू हाउ डू यू राइव एट दी आंसर कि ये अजम्पन है कैसे लाइक फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन आई जस्ट रेड इट एंड अंडरस्टूड द क्वेश्चन स्टेम एंड देन एक्चुअली आई काइंड ऑफ लाइक थॉट अबाउट इट व्हाट कुड द अजम्पन बी हियर एंड तो ठीक है तो एक हाँ तो एक नॉर्मल वे जब इन विच पीपल गेट टू दंसर्स इन एजामशन क्वेश्चन विदाउट गोइंग थ्रू इंडिकेशन इज सर्ट ऑफ दे कैन अंडरस्टैंड द गैप दैट इज इन दर्गमेंट दैन दे फाइंड द ऑप्शन दैट इज अराउंड दैट गैप दे मार्क दैट ऑप्शन ओके सो दिस विल वर्क लॉट ऑफ टाइम्स uh but if i create two options which are around correct gaps but one is a necessary thing one is not necessary then you will falter because you will not know how to differentiate okay in questions in which there is only one option that is really solidly playing around a gap others are not really uh, or others are really going on tangents and all that then even with your approach you can get so to get to the answer in those questions but the logical uh, full proof way or you can say because the definition of assumption okay when we talk about assumption but what is an assumption right the technical definition uh, is is a something necessary for the argument to hold so how do we know whether it's necessary by by negating it तो हाउ डू यू नो कि कोई चीज आपके लिए जरूरी है कि उसके बिना आपका काम ना चले या सो वी निगेट द ऑप्शन एंड देन सी वेदर द आर्ग्यूमेंट स्टिल होल्ड्स इफ द आर्ग्यूमेंट स्टिल होल्ड्स एंड इट्स नॉट नेसेसरी इफ द आर्ग्यूमेंट ब्रेक्स डाउन देन इट्स नेसेसरी दैट्स सो द निगेशन टेक्निक इज नॉट रियली अ टेक्निक एज सच इट इज इट जस्ट फॉलोज फ्रॉम द डेफिनेशन ऑफ एज समथिंग दैट हैज टू बी नेसेसरीली फॉलोड टू फिगर आउट एन एजम्पन otherwise you are just taking a call so your calls could be right depending upon your skill level so it could could be right 70% of the time 80% of the time i don't know but consistently always right i doubt so in negation uh, so in a typical necessary assumptions we and and I, as i said it's a typical when we talk about assumption question we talk about necessary assumption Rather, sufficient assumption as a concept is hardly discussed. It's hardly talked about in in the GMAT opinion because there are hardly any questions on sufficient assumption. There are two three questions now, but again, very very small proportion. Okay, but this is a sufficient assumption question. So in this case, negation technique wouldn't work because it's not even supposed to be necessary, right? The negation technique works when it is necessary. So you negate it and say argument breaks down or not. If the argument breaks down, you know it's necessary. So it's it's the answer. Insufficient. It's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be sufficient. So the way to evaluate is 
whether this will really again help us arrive at the conclusion with the conclusion we properly drawn will it really bridge the gap okay so this along with the premises will help us infer the conclusion let's put it that way because it is sufficient premise plus this will sufficiently arrive at the conclusion or will help us infer the conclusion so that's a way we'll evaluate the options here any questions any doubts so far cj i get to know for the first time that these are, there are differences in assumption also i used to think that these are necessary only uh, i mean for the first time i'm able to understand the difference between these two and the sufficient one will not be able to apply the negation technique right so uh, perhaps one reason as i said is because there are very few uh, mm -hmm. sufficient assumption questions and uh, and again if you are extremely precise then you will be able to understand yeah but negation technique doesn't work in this assumption question <laughs> okay because uh, if you apply negation even in this question uh, you will be able to reject the correct answer okay mm -hmm. <laughs> but people are not so precise so they don't get to realize that the approach is not working this they, they think that they are going somewhere wrong or even when they read the explanation they don't get, get to realize that uh, that this is not a typical assumption question so just end up force fitting things mm -hmm. and of course it's also possible that you have not even come across <laughs> a sufficient <laughs> assumption question maybe yeah Okay, so let's start with option A. <clears throat> so we know that the argument is, the premise is that there, there's a 7% sales tax on most products in, in a state. And on that basis, the conclusion is saying, oh, this tax, this sales tax has a reverse effect. Basically, this tax is essentially taxing people with lower income more. Okay, so this is the conclusion. Uh, so let's start with option A. Any volunteers to talk about option A? So option A is saying that the amount of money citizens spend on products. Which products? That are subject to state tax. So basically, we are talking about those products in which there is a state tax. Okay. So the amount of money citizens spend on these products, which are the products which are subject to state tax or on which state tax is levied. So the amount of money tends to be equal across income levels. If you are earning a lot, then also you'll spend the same amount on those products. If you're earning sort of quite low, then also you'll end up spending the same amount of money on these products. That's the meaning of option A. <clears throat> so will this help us arrive at the conclusion? Yes, how so basically it is saying that the money is spent by citizens on the products which are subject to state tax tends to be equal, so then only uh, the sell tax is being charged maybe higher with lower income people. I mean, this is two things I have you uh, like you know the meaning of this thing as well how we are able to arrive at the conclusion in this not sure i i got it sorry i didn't get the reason 
Ah, so basically, what it is saying that the money is spent by the citizens mm. on the products wherein the state takes is levied. So that money is equal across income level. Hmm. Yeah. So so basically, if the money spent is equal across income level. So that gives us a gap that okay, this then only the sales tax is being charged on more people with lower income. <clears throat> okay, so if the money is equal, then you are saying there is more sales tax charged. Yeah, see, so basically it, it is trying to say that wherever, let's say the person is poor or, or rich, but the money spent by them is, is equal across their purchasing power, then, then the sale tax is being charged flat on, uh, I mean, flat meaning uh, the sale tax is more with people having a lower income. Because higher income is anyways bearing that. So if money spent is equal, they will they will pay uh, the same amount of tax, right? Uh, I mean, I mean the proportion of their income to tax to income is higher. Right. 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 The, but the intermediate step will be that they are spending the same amount of money. So they will pay the same amount of tax. True. Now, if we divide this, uh, right, this amount of tax. To their income. It, then definitely this ratio would be. Ratio will be higher for people with lower incomes, right? Right? Uh, I'm just checking that I said it reverse of what one thing. Right. Mm. So yeah. Mm. Yeah. So if the amount of if they're spending the same amount, then they're paying the same amount of tax. So if they are paying the same amount of tax, essentially, uh, they are paying a larger proportion of their income as tax because the income is lower. So that's why it has the reverse effect because normally federal income tax, lower the income, the higher, sort of the lower the income, it should be the lower the percentage rate normally you will charge a lower percentage to people with lower income but in this case the lower the income the more the greater the percentage you are paying as a proportion of your income so this is kind of an inverse relationship in sales tax versus income tax right? income tax right yeah. Hmm. yeah okay this is fine yeah shivangi you wanted to say something Uh, actually, I was just giving that example, I think, uh, in which a low-income person is uh, earning 1000 and the high-income person is earning 10000 and they both are spending uh, 700 and then the proportion is different for, like, I think Kushbu already covered it in words, so then I realized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. So let's say if we negate it, what will be the negation of this? Uh, the amount of money citizens do not spend Sorry, sorry. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, let me tell it again. The amount of money citizens spend on products subject to tax 
tends to not be equal across income levels. Yeah, or does not tend to be equal or uh -huh. yeah, right, something like that. It does not tend to be equal. So basically it's it's not equal, let's say. It could be smaller, it could be larger for any particular income group. Right? Yeah. So it could be uh, larger also for people with lower incomes. Hmm. This is allowing that possibility, right? But if it is larger for people with lower incomes, this is going to further support the argument, not break down the argument. True, true. true. Right. This is and not that, going to, yeah. Uh, so the negation doesn't break down the argument. Okay, so it's not a necessary assumption. Yeah. Um, if the income is not equal, then how does a lower income person is being taxed more? I mean, how is this possible? How is that possible? I don't understand. How can we still make that conclusion? Uh, so let's say we are talking about salt. Okay, and people with lower income actually spend, actually eat more salt than people with higher incomes. Okay, so they are not spending the same amount, they are actually spending a greater amount. Okay. Are you there? Yes, yes, I got it. Yeah. So if they are spending a higher amount, they are paying a higher tax so as a proportion of their income, it will be even higher because they have a lower income. So the conclusion will hold. We don't need it to be equal. Okay. Got it. it can be higher for lower people with lower incomes. Okay. Okay, so option A is fine. Let's talk about option B. So uh, option B is saying uh, basically the income tax favors citizens with higher income, meaning we can infer that uh, low tax, whereas the sale tax favors citizens with low income, mm -hmm. meaning uh, low tax. Meaning low tax. Ah, low tax, Fa right. Favors, favors, meaning I'm assuming that this is yeah, like something like that. Yeah. 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 Then. Then. Okay. Tax for people with higher income, that is sell tax uh, rate for for people with low income, lower tax basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is basically if we negate, I, I mean, are you asking do we negate or can I explain it differently? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. So just the reasoning. In any case, the negation is not supposed to even work in this question. Mm -hmm. right? We just did negation to understand yeah, that this is, we are dealing with it. Just to further support my point that it is not a necessary assumption question that we are doing. But once you understand that naturally you, sh you shouldn't be doing negation in this question. Mm -hmm. So basically this is not bridging our gap from premise to conclusion because it is saying that um, like income tax is favoring for people with high income whereas sell tax is favoring for people with low income. So our conclusion was to arrive, see the can you come up once, once again in the PIR. And so our conclusion was that sales tax 
let me also paste it. Yeah. Yeah. So our conclusion in the argument was that sales tax taxes more people with lower income. Right? Yeah. But yeah. but here this this option is saying that lower tax rate for people with low income. So anyways, this is giving out inverse relationship. Right? Sorry, this? This is giving inverse relationship. Yeah. yeah. This seems to go in the opposite direction. Yeah. Right. So definitely this cannot help us arrive at the conclusion. Okay. Option C. Hmm. Anybody would like to explain option C? Yeah, I can go ahead. Sure. So it says that citizens with low annual incomes can afford to pay a relatively higher percentage of their incomes on sales, state sales tax since their federal income is relatively low. Right. So it means it kind of says that they have more dispensable income after federal tax so they can spend a higher percentage of it on uh, sales tax. Mm -hmm. uh, so this kind of tells us that uh, it the tax won't might or might not be uh, equal. So I'm a little confused on this. Uh, the reasoning that we can get out of this is that okay. if they so. I agree that they would pay, they would have more dispensable income, but the extent to which the... They would have more dispensable income. What? They will have more dispensable income. Yes. People with uh, the uh, people with lower income, federal income tax will have more dispensable income. But these are people with low annual income. Yes. They will have higher dispensable income. After, uh, okay, yeah. After sales, compared to the percentage, yes, percentage of their income, they uh, would have the percentage of income they will have. More. They will have a higher percentage as disposable because they are being a lower percentage as income tax. Yes. Right. Percentage wise, yes. Correct. But after that, I don't know how well it fits to be an assumption for the question. Like I can't. So does it support the argument? So that's essentially it's a essentially we are doing a sufficient assumption. So something that will help us properly draw the conclusion. So it's it should be an extremely great strength essentially, right? Hmm. Up. If, if we assume this, then we definitely arrive at the conclusion. So it's a great strengthener. So is it strengthening the argument? Yeah, I feel it is strengthening the argument. How? Because uh, it is agreeing with the fact that the federal income tax taxes people with lower income less and people with higher income more. Plus, because of that, uh, the 7% sales tax uh, is uh, more on people with lower incomes. So, so the overall tax that they would be paying would be more because uh, as a percentage of their income. I'm not very clear. How does it support the argument? So, uh, I mean that 
it is supporting the argument because people with higher income they're paying less federal uh, more federal tax people with lower income are paying less and that is uh, in ad adherence to the argument but mm -hmm. the argument the conclusion is that sales tax is more for people with less income right right so now if they spend more on products with with sales tax uh, the percentage that they would be charged on their whole income would be more than the rich people because rich people spend even less on the 7% sales tax so if yeah. people with low income spend more on products with sales tax then if people with low income spend more on products with sales tax uh, they are overall charged more than the people with uh, higher income they are paying more, more sales tax essentially right yes then people with higher income so that's how it supports that's how this option c supports the argument yeah yeah okay um so you are saying that it is supporting because uh because uh, it's saying that since people with high income are paying more federal income tax people with low are sort of they can pay a higher sales tax so people with low income they spend more on products with sales tax so then they are paying more sales tax than people with high income so that supports the argument yeah so essentially they should be so poor people should be paying less but because of the 7% sales tax it's equal across everyone for all regardless of if they're poor or rich and the poor are spending more according to this statement so it is supporting that uh the the poor are getting taxed more according to this statement poor are spending more and that's so 7% uh sales tax so they are essentially getting taxed more yes hmm. okay anybody has a different view or want to add anything to this reason yes yes i mean here this is saying that citizens with low and annual income can afford right so it is not showing that should they are going to spend more so can could be the possibility but this is a not a uh, strong strengthener to hold the argument okay yeah i i did not pay attention to the word can i i assume that it would be meaning that they do actually spend a relatively higher percentage of their income on sales tax So, so Akansha, you're saying you ignored this can afford part. Yes, I did not. Yeah, like I did, it did not cross my comprehension part. Like I just assumed that it would be more. It means more. So essentially, you read this as without this. So citizens with low annual incomes pay a relatively higher percentage of their incomes in sales tax. Yes. uh but then this is saying exactly the same as the conclusion that this tax has a reverse effect essentially people with low annual incomes are paying a higher percentage yeah exactly same as conclusion hmm okay theek hai shivangi I feel while Akansha was mentioning about the reasoning, she was assuming that either uh, both low income and higher income people are uh, spending equally, or the lower income people are spending more on the product. So it needed one more assumption uh, for this to hold true. Uh, else, I don't see this uh, holding true if we don't assume that. you are saying akansha was using assuming something else also yeah that either they both uh, are spending equal that's why 
you know uh, it's happening or actually she was assuming that lower income are spending also higher on the products nahi wo to so that's why the higher percentage of their income is also So why are you saying that Akansha was assuming this? Akansha was just understanding this statement that they are spending a higher oh, percentage. Maybe that's how I I understood her reasoning. That maybe that the reason why, uh, or maybe this is my understanding that only when even if they have uh lower in uh income federal tax, the only way that they can be Giving higher percentage of their income in sales tax is either two ways: both lower income and higher income people are spending equal, or the lower income people are actually spending more on the products. That's why they are spending, uh, giving more sales tax. हाँ, but उससे तो मैं फर्क नहीं पड़ता जो दोनों में से कौन सा केस है, because the conclusion is just about the higher percentage rate, which this option is directly talking about. right so we don't need to get into why there is a higher percentage are they actually spending more or is just because their income is lower right um the conclusion is also about higher percentage the option is also about higher percentage so we don't need to get into higher percentage kyun equal hai ya they are spending more on the products still i can't see the link between since their income tax is relatively lower they can pay a uh, higher uh, relatively higher percentage of their incomes in state sales tax you are saying you are not able to see a connection between this and this yeah maybe it's a conditional thing but this cannot always be true you are saying option c need not always be true बट ऑप्शन सी के ट्रुथ वैल्यू थोड़ा ना इवेलुएट करनी है हमने वी आर नॉट डूइंग एन एंट्रेंस क्वेश्चन वी आर डूइंग एन एजम्पन क्वेश्चन मतलब इसमें हमें सफिशियंट एजम्पन ढूंढनी है कि अगर ये सही है तो क्या आर्ग्यूमेंट विल डेफिनेटली होल्ड डज इट सपोर्ट द आर्ग्यूमेंट टू दैट एक्सटेंड वी आर नॉट सपोज टू द क्वेश्चन इज नॉट आस्किंग टू इवेलुएट इट्स ट्रुथ वैल्यू The question is asking us that if this is the case, if you add it to the premise, which means you take it to be true and add it to the premise, then can we be sure of the conclusion? That is the question. Right. Okay. So the question is not even asking us to evaluate this option C is truth value. ये अपने आप में सही है कि नहीं है? वो तो आपको सही मान के चलना है. उसको सही मान लिया तो अब क्या? Along with the premise, can we be sure about the conclusion? That is the question. Hmm. So option C has no impact. Uh, essentially, it's saying that since federal income tax is relatively low for these people with low incomes, they can afford to pay a relatively higher percentage. क्योंकि इनकम टैक्स कम है तो दे कैन अफोर्ड टू पे अ हायर परसेंटेज इन सेल्स टैक्स दैट्स व्हाई दे कैन अफोर्ड टू पे बट इज द सेल्स टैक्स एक्चुअली डूइंग इट वी डोंट नो दैट राइट राइट फॉर एग्जांपल आई कैन अफोर्ड टू सफर सम लॉसेस डज इट मीन कि मेरी करंट इन्वेस्टमेंट्स विल लीड टू लॉसेस दैट वी डोंट नो ओके जस्ट सम समथिंग आई कैन अफोर्ड डजंट मीन इज एक्चुअली हैपनिंग टू मी Okay. Uh, yeah. So as Akansha said, uh, she may have been faltering in just comprehending the statement. So yeah. So option C has no impact. Let's get to option D. So, how do we evaluate option D? So, 
सो इट्स सेइंग द लोअर अस्टेट्स सेल्स टैक्स तो जितना सेल्स टैक्स कम होगा द मोर इट विल टेंड द मोर द सेल्स टैक्स विल टेंड टू रीडिस्ट्रीब्यूट इनकम from the more affluent citizens to the rest of the society so we are talking about higher income groups and lower income groups and we are saying ki jitna states ka tax kam hoga overall to so 7% hai kam kar dein aur kam kar dein utna it will redistribute income from people with higher uh incomes affluent people to the rest of the society ओके दिस इज व्हाट दिस ऑप्शन इज सेइंग कि अगर सेवन को हम कम कर दें इसको और सेल्स टैक्स को कम कर दें उतना इट विल रीडिस्ट्रीब्यूट उतना एसेंशियली इट्स गुड फॉर द लोअर इनकम ग्रुप्स बिकॉज एसेंशियली इट्स सेइंग द मोर इट विल टेंड टू रीडिस्ट्रीब्यूट इनकम तो एसेंशियली इट विल टेक सम इनकम फ्रॉम द एफ्लुएंट पीपल एंड गिव इट टू सर्ट ऑफ पीपल विद लोअर इनकम्स दैट्स द मीनिंग ऑफ ऑप्शन डी so what is the impact so cj basically it's not talking about people with lower income i mean that percentage part uh, like higher sales tax percentage on on your income it's mm-hmm. basically saying that low sales tax so it is kind of a low sales tax on high income not high sales tax on low income which was our conclusion uh, uh, you are saying it is in the opposite direction i am thinking one second uh i mean if we can also think about that that lower sales tax will be applicable for higher income as well and lower income as well right wo to hamesha hoga hai right jo context hai to sales tax तो प्रोडक्ट के ऊपर है तो वेदर इफ अ हायर इनकम पर्सन परचेसेस दैट प्रोडक्ट विल आल्सो हैव टू पे द प्रोडक्ट सेल्स टैक्स या सो इट्स इट्स एनीवेज नॉट हेल्पिंग अस टू अराइव एट दैट इनवर्स रिलेशन एनी दैट लो इनकम हाई सेल टैक्स हम्म सो दिस इज नॉट अ स्ट्रेंगनर टू होल्ड द आर्गुमेंट बिकॉज़ इट इज एसेंशियली सेइंग दैट no sale tax on high income as well as low income so we are not able to get that gap to arrive that conclusion okay yeah shivang you even if uh, we lower the state sales tax and this income is distributed from more affluent people to rest of the society either way it does not affect uh, if the lower income people are paying a higher percentage of their income or not because anyway they will it will be redistributed to the rest of the society it does not affect anyway it will be redistributed yeah matlab if we even lower it just says we lower the uh, state sales tax the more it will tend to redistribute income from more affluent citizens i got i didn't read the word. i i think i'll take this i just need uh, i don't know i think i just word okay. miss the word more first okay okay okay, okay. akansha i think uh, this is not a very relevant uh, option 
as uh, even if the sales tax is lower like the percentage is lower uh they they are even if it get gets redistributed they will be spending uh you know a percentage it could be higher or lower redistribution doesn't really affect uh i think the percentage that they would be spending on tax overall so it is not i don't think it is a very relevant uh option to consider for this yeah argument. okay hmm why is it not relevant because uh, whatever sales tax may be 5% or 3% 7% se kitna bhi lower ho the argument ka point is not 7% leads to more it means that more income sales tax leads to more uh to overall higher tax income and this says that kam hoga to redistribute ho jayega which the redistribution doesn't really matter because they're initially only talking about kitna percentage of the income is charged correct 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 yeah so the argument is as as akansha rightly said it's not just about it's not about 7% or 3% or 2% or 1% it's just about ki jitna bhi percent hai essentially uh since it is the same percentage for all the people for, all, for sort of doesn't matter who buys the product so the argument remains the same that poor people end up paying a higher percentage of their income as tax okay now whether bringing it down from 7 to 5 to 3 or whatever it will distribute redistribute income in some way but the whole argument will remain the same that they are paying more sales tax as a percentage of their income so this has no impact any questions any doubts here okay let's talk about option e <clears throat> so option e saying that citizens who fail to earn federal federally taxable income meaning uh, below the below the limit of the taxation from where the tax i mean exempt income we can say exempt taxable income mm. or also exempt from the sales tax so for them i mean the income tax is also zero and the sales tax is also zero so this is a kind of neutral statement for this regard because we want to know we want to arrive at conclusion where that inverse relation in in the percentage of sales tax will come hmm hmm yeah so we are talking about the inverse relationship that poor people are actually paying a higher percentage so this option seems to go in the opposite direction yes that these people are poor but they're not even paying the sales tax right so definitely yeah. they are not paying a higher percentage of their income as sales tax so this is not even aligned with the conclusion so this is going in the opposite direction so that cannot be the answer any questions any doubts any confusions here the cj i have a question in terms of um, assumption question so basically wherever the question is of necessarily you said we can apply that negation technique yeah also can we look for strengthener mild or strong in that regard just like how we are doing here in sufficient Yeah, yeah. So, so there we don't need to be worried about whether it's a mild strengthener or a strong strengthener. Uh, mm -hmm. As long as it's strengthener, it can be a necessary assumption. If it is not a strengthener, then it cannot be any assumption. For the simple reason, if कोई चीज आपको support भी नहीं कर रही है, why would you assume that, right? 
okay but uh, so if it is supporting then in the case of necessary assumption we don't worry about whether it's strongly supporting or it mildly supporting a very mild strengthener can strengthener can also be a necessary assumption okay so in in five option choices there will be only one strengthener it could be mild or strong right oh. No, no, there can be more than one strand. There are multiple, there are many official questions there are in which there are multiple strands. Okay, then, and then negation technique only will bring us that. Okay. Got yeah, it. again, as I said, negation technique is just a consciously logical way or it could be that your gut works that you can identify that, yeah, this is really playing around the gap and this is just strengthening in a marginal way or sort of in an not really exactly around the gap. So again, you could play around your intuition or the logical ways using negation. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Hmm. So with that, let's move on to the next question. So let's first try to understand the meaning of this passage, sentence by sentence. So yeah, any volunteer? So basically it is saying that in English language, the past we denote as behind and future is ahead versus in Amira, which could be different language, the past is ahead and the future behind. Basically, opposite of what we say in English language. Okay. And Okay. Go ahead. Next. Okay. Uh, next. Though this research, there's a research which indicates that English speakers sway backward when when discussing the past. So basically, they sway meaning I am assuming move backward when discussing the past and forward when discussing the future. So basically their movement is in the direction of the event. Basically when they are discussing past, they are moving uh, behind or backward. And when they are discussing future, they are moving forward, meaning ahead. Yeah. So it is okay. in the direction of the description of that. Yes, it is in the direction. Okay. Where? Okay. Conversely, the Amira speaker gesture forward with their hands. So there is a there is difference in what we were discussing in English speakers where we are saying sway backward. So sway yeah. meaning movement of their own. But here they are saying gesture forward with their hands. I mean, mm. only hands they are talking about. So, so basically what they do, they gesture forward with their hands when discussing the past, okay, which is like in the opposite direction and backward when discussing the future. So it, it's a, like in the opposite direction of their gesture of their hands, which is different from what uh, sway backward was different in English speakers. Okay. Okay, and the last. Hold on, hold on. Do you not also see that this is also in line with their with their description? No, no, no. Because it is saying discussing the past, right? It is not saying the word. I mean, past meaning. I mean, they are moving in the opposite direction only. 
Ah, so but their language is also in the opposite direction. Eh? Language is opposite, but the language term here it's not saying that just saying past. But I mean, they are not mentioning here specifically the about the language. No, no, Amira speakers we are talking about, right? Ah, cha, ha, 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 ha. So you didn't make this connection. <laughs> Now I realize. Yes, yes, yes. इंटरेस्टिंग Hmm. Okay. But I I find out that there's a difference between what the research indicates is like in the English speakers, the ne moment. Ah, वो ठीक है आपने वो नोटिस कर लिया वो डिफरेंस. Uh, but आपने ये नोटिस नहीं करा कि वो सेम अपनी लैंग्वेज के हिसाब से कंसिस्टेंट है वो. हाँ, this I did not arrive at that lo I mean logical conclusion of this connection. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so basically, this these bodily movements. Con, I mean, the conclusion of these bodily movements suggests that language one speaks affects how one mentally visualizes time. I mean, essentially, what uh, we are saying that the English speakers they are moving in the direction and. Also, the Amara um, Amara speakers are also in the direction of what is the event. Hmm. Right. and this we are saying because we have seen it in uh, english and amara speakers that their body is moving in line with how the time is described in the language true yeah okay any questions comments so far anybody has a different take i have one thing uh, while reading this i did draw the conclusion that they are moving in the direction how they see time uh but i didn't actually put a lot of attention that they are moving their whole body or just their hands i just uh, even while reading i was just only moving my hands and that's how i was reading the whole thing so i didn't actually put a lot of emphasis on it but while kushbu was explaining i realized okay uh she put attention on the word sway and hands and she drew that conclusion as well okay okay hmm matlab uh, frankly i'm not sure whether uh to so dekho there are differences some of the differences naturally i'm able to intuitively understand catch uh other differences i may miss and if if the option or the argument itself plays around those differences then i'll go back and see acha acha ye difference hai okay for example in this case i'm not sure whether i'll uh, particularly pay attention ki acha acha ye uh, body puri move ho rahi hai versus yahan pe sirf hand movement hai but let's say some yeah. some down the line it starts talking about ki hand movement or body movement fark hota hai like बॉडी मूवमेंट की कौन सी भी बात क्यों हो रही है देन आई गो बैक एंड सी अच्छा अच्छा देर इज अ डिफरेंस ठीक है और यहाँ पे इन केस सो फार आर्ग्यूमेंट इज नॉट इवन प्लेइंग ऑन दैट डिफरेंस उसने सीधे ही बोल दिया दीज बॉडीली मूवमेंट जो भी है हैंड मूवमेंट है चाहे बॉडी मूवमेंट है yeah i that's i think that's also the reason because conclusion and then options also none of them talk about it so uh, options mujhe pata nahi but ha conclusion so far hasn't talked about hasn't played on that difference it's it's a good yeah. habit especially when you are practicing ki aap you 
you can see the differences. The more differences you are able to see intuitively, sort of the faster you become, the uh, more clarity you have. But I'm just saying, even even when I'm reading, okay, buddy, some of these differences I may miss. But if something plays around, then I can come back and say, yeah, it's playing around that difference. But yeah. hmm. this the kind of connection that Khushbu missed, ki Amaira speakers, ki unki language was described. That I don't think I'll miss. Yeah, even when I was moving my hand also while I was treating this forward. And so I also caught that, but not the other difference. Hmm. So, so, okay. Basically, when this conclusion was mentioned, I was able to connect later, but I have to do it before as well. Even if this conclusion was not mentioned, we could arrive that, okay, this will be the conclusion here. Yeah, explicit. Implicitly also we can... And when I read the third statement, I'll make that yeah, connection. Yeah, I missed that. Right, right. I would not wait for the conclusion to come. Because wo to understand ki baat kyon kar raha hai, ye fir ulta kaam kyon kar raha hai. Par ulta wahan pe bhi to ulta hai. Achha, to apne se to align nahi hai. That's how I'll consume it. So, uh, so the conclusion is that the, the language of one speaks affects how one mentally visualizes time. So the language has, has an impact on the mental visualization of time. And this is we are saying this on the basis of uh, what we have observed about Amaira and Amara or English speakers. Ki English may be just a past behind that. To, they are moving backwards. Future forward has that they are moving forward. And Amara past is ahead, so they are moving, they're sort of moving their hand forward and so on. So essentially, uh, on that basis, given how sort of their body is reacting to what they are talking about, we are making this conclusion the language has an impact on the mental visualization of time. And now the question is, uh, the reasoning depends on assuming. So the author's reasoning depends. It requires which of the following. So we are looking for a necessary assumption here. Even if it didn't, word, didn't use the word assuming, it, it just said the linguistics reasoning depends on which of the following. It would be still be, we are still be looking for an assumption. We're looking for something the argument depends on, something the argument requires. Okay, um, so let's start with option A. It's it's saying that at least some Amira speakers, at least some sway forward when discussing the past and backward when discussing the future. So it is agreeing that some do the same movement that the argument is saying that they do. But... Uh, it doesn't really, it is not a necessary thing because the argument... Oh, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Let's talk about the meaning first. So you're saying this is saying that at least some people actually do that. Some people do the Amira movement. Some Amira speakers do the same movement that the argument is saying that they do. But we aren't, we are, so this is just repeating the fact? It is the re repeating the fact with the with just a little change that it is just some people. So it doesn't really contribute, like it is not necessary for the argument. Because no, the argument... no, 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 hold on. You're again mixing. So first yeah. is to understand the meaning. Once we are very clear with the meaning, then we move to analysis. But right now we are talking about the meaning itself. Okay. So you are saying that they do it. Now it's saying some people do it. But they do it. Yeah. yeah. So then yeah. you are saying it's not even giving you any new information. Yes. Then it cannot be an assumption. Yeah. Necessary hai ya nahi, baat ki baat hai. New yeah. information nahi hai, out ho gaya. Hmm. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. Uh, others, anything to add or subtract?
so CJ here it is giving us additional information that Amira speakers at least some of them sway forward but in our above passage they were mentioning gesture forward with their hands okay so it's talking about swaying what is what the argument talked about gesturing right yes so it is new information yes this is not saying the same thing this is giving us new information the uh, argument was talking with respect to amara speakers that they are gesturing gesturing forward when they are talking about past and now it's saying they are swaying forward <laughs> so the difference that kushbu highlighted for example that i was i i was saying that i i am not sure whether i'll be able to catch that difference but when i read option a i'll be able to see that difference because if i don't understand the difference then it's like bol to diya upar dobara at least samne laga ke bol raha hai so that will be a little surprising for me because in assumption questions we don't repeat what is already given have never seen an option which is repeating information even though of course assumption is something new this new thing is never violated every assumption option and so far has given new information to mere liye off cheat ho gayi ye same cheez ke bol raha and then i'll see ke acha acha it's talking about swaying jo english speakers ke bare mein baat kar rahe the now it's talking about amara speakers with that they sway forward so now it's talking about that the direction of uh swing is aligned with the direction uh, and of the language and this is the case for at least some amara speakers so this is new information and uh, uh yeah so this is new information so does it support the argument yes it is supporting the argument okay so we can cross check with negation technique as well hmm so if we apply at least some amara speaker do not sway forward when discussing the past and backward so essentially then our conclusion of the language you know affects the mental isolation so that will be that our uh, conclusion will be will not be valid then so this is an assumption is that what you are saying Uh, yes yes okay yeah rochak so cj in this case like is it like the difference only means swaying and gesturing with hands so this difference is only playing as part of the new information yeah 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 this part is new no so swing cannot consider gesturing with hands as well swing can we matlab, not swing ka matlab gesturing with hands kaise ho sakta hai swing ka matlab wohi hota hai jo swing hota hai you're swing forward backward you're moving मतलब जो उसका मतलब होता है मतलब वही मतलब होता है उसका आगे भी से कि इसको ये ले लेते हैं हम्म 
anybody has anything to add or object to what has gone on so far? I think the negation part really brought things into perspective. I wouldn't have done that if I was solving the question on my own. No, no, look, here negation wouldn't have helped you. Because in your understanding, it was saying the same thing. If you do negation, you would say that this is the one who is conflicting, who has given it, how can you conflict it? Yeah, that plus, like, even if, uh, I think even if, मेरे को ये अंडरस्टैंडिंग आ जाती जो नहीं आई थी, still I would have assumed it as the same thing is what I'm trying to say कि ये एक एरर तो था ही मेरे अंडरस्टैंडिंग में कि स्वेय हैंड मूवमेंट गलत थी, but उसके बाद भी I'm thinking even if I would have had that difference तो कि मैं गलती करती जो नेगेशन से मुझे समझ आ गई नहीं है नहीं तो अगर लेट्स नेगेशन को छोड़ देते हैं तो अगर आपको डिफरेंस समझ आ रहा था तो आपके इंटू यू यू नॉन यू डोंट नॉर्मली यूज निगेशन राइट आई डोंट या यू जस्ट सर्ट ऑफ सेंस करते हो कि ये गैप के राउंड प्ले कर रहा है नहीं कर रहा है समथिंग लाइक दैट राइट या तो उसके हिसाब से आपको ना लगता कि ये प्रॉपर एजम्पशन है अगर यू जस्ट थिंक इंटूटिवली एंड यू अंडरस्टैंड द डिफरेंस हम्म so would it wouldn't you... be a very I wouldn't accept it in the first go I would go to all the other options read it and then... but आप इसको reject नहीं करोगे ऐसे right okay right हाँ हाँ intuitively you not rejected if you understand the difference yeah yeah ठीक है तो आप कह रहे हो कि अगर negation कर रहे होते then you will sort of be very clear कि यही है हाँ right तो मुझे हाँ मतलब फिर वो रेपिटेशन और एक्स्ट्रा टाइम लग जाता सबको एनालाइज करके नेगेशन से दिस एक्चुअली ब्रॉड थिंग्स इनटू पर्सपेक्टिव कि यू नो अगर ये नहीं होगा तो इट डजेंट एक्चुअली प्रूव ओनली द कंक्लूशन तो ठीक है स्टैंडिंग माय रीजनिंग ओके एनीबडी एल्स हैज एनीथिंग टू ऐड Still, I I still don't I still don't know how this is an assumption. तो कोई specific objection है मतलब to to what we have discussed या you just say कि मुझे I don't agree with all this. We found the difference between swaying and gesturing or hands. Correct. Uh, then. From analysis only, how how is this supporting the argument? At least some uh, Myra speakers sway forward when discussing time, but that is not what is. How was this an assumption? I did not understand. I according to me, this was not an assumption, and I think list uh, seeing the negation and anal analysis, maybe I'm a bit confused. But still, according to me, this is not an assumption. ठीक है तो यू नॉट गिविंग एनी रीजन यू जस्ट सिंग मेरी फीलिंग से लाइन नहीं है आई अ एस लाइक आई जस्ट फील दैट हाउ इज दिस हेल्पिंग विद द ने लिखा हुआ सब इट इज स्विंग दे आर आल्सो स्विंग इन द सेम डायरेक्शन ऑफ द लैंग्वेज देन व्हाई व्हाई डज इट सपोर्ट If if we get to know that our Mara speakers, पहले मैं बता दूँ, they the the way they gesture is aligned with the description of the in their language. And now we also get to know that their swing is also aligned. So why does it not support the argument? But isn't the word at least some not? Uh, so let's say all लिखा होता, all लिखा होता तो support करता. Then it must be repeating what's already in the passage. Then it's not repeating. Then it was already there. It is not repeating. So then you have not even understood the difference between swaying and gesturing with hands. 
what we are given in the argument is that the gesture with hands in a way that is aligned with the description in their language. We are not given anything about how they sway, this Amara speaker sway. Got it. This is a new yeah. piece of information. Uh, now we get to know that the way at least some people sway is aligned with how it is described in the language. So it's a positive thing right. to know. It's not a neutral thing. So this supports the argument. Right. Okay. So now a couple of things here that might shock Akansha a little. Two things. The negation is wrong. This negation is not the correct negation. The second thing, even if I do the negation right, which I'll do, still it is not an assumption. Okay, so let me explain that step by step. Uh, I'll so negation is uh, what is the meaning of negation? The simple meaning of negation is the statement is not true. That is the meaning of negation. Or we can also say the statement is false. Let's say if somebody is making a statement, uh, at least some Indians are mad. What will the negation of this? No Indian is mad. Kancha, do you agree with that? I am I'm not sure. I think confusion or ah, to... <laughs> say you were drawing your uh, insights from that which itself turned out to be wrong. Yeah. So as I said, ki, wo thoda shocking ho aapke liye. But I was just writing what Kushbu was saying. I was not commenting ki, hai, galat hai. Mm -hmm. I rather I was asking for objections also. Mm -hmm. Uh so, so I'll just tell you that at least some Indians are mad ka negation, at least some Indians are not mad. Because these two statements are true, right? What is the problem? Some Indians are mad, some Indians are not mad. So some Indians are not mad, Indians are not mad. So some Indians are not mad is not equivalent to saying that this statement is wrong. Right? If someone says at least some Indians are mad, they say that no one of the Indians are mad. And you say that no, this is not true. You say that no one is not mad. राइट क्योंकि अगर कोई भी है तो फिर तो वो सही बोल रहा है राइट राइट सो द नेगेशन इज नो इंडियन इज मैड सिमिलरली यहां पे जो नेगेशन होगी इस स्टेटमेंट की वो कह रहा है एटलीस्ट सम स्वे फॉरवर्ड तो इसका नेगेशन होगा नन कोई भी स्वे फॉरवर्ड नहीं होता डिस्कसिंग पास्ट एंड बैकवर्ड नहीं होता डिस्कसिंग फ्यूचर तो उनकी स्वेइंग मूवमेंट डेफिनेटली इज नॉट अलाइंड वो पता नहीं स्वे भी होते हैं नहीं होते वी वी डोंट नो दैट वी आर नॉट सेइंग कि उल्टा स्वे होते हैं ये जस्ट सेइंग कि एट लीस्ट दे डोंट स्वे इन द सेम डायरेक्शन राइट इट कुड बी दैट दिस जस्ट स्टैंड स्टिल वी डोंट राइट दे डोंट स्वे एट ऑल while while discussing right mm -hmm. but we are just saying that they don't sway forward when discussing past they don't sway backward when discussing future that's all we are saying so unki swaying to hame nahi pata hai matlab swaying is definitely hame nahi hame ye to pata hai ki it's not aligned whether they sway or not we don't know that. it's it's misaligned or not that also we don't know we just know it's not happening but we know that they are gestures are aligned and in case of english speakers swaying is aligned right right in case of english yeah. speakers swaying was aligned sorry i i was just saying could you repeat i couldn't get that huh. that you were trying to say तो एक तो है कि जो आर्गुमेंट है वो है कि इंग्लिश स्पीकर्स में स्वेइंग इज अलाइंड डिस्क्रिप्शन इन द लैंग्वेज इन अमेरा स्पीकर्स 
gestures are aligned and on that basis we are saying ki bodily movements to be a, the argument is not really concerned ki kya kaun si bodily movement and agar bodily movements se pata lagta hai ki the language affects the mental visualization right right yes. so now we get to know ki let's say amara speakers mein to swaying ho hi nahi rahi hai ya fir swaying is not aligned whether this way or not that also we don't know hmm <laughs> but gesturing to ho rahi hai which is aligned you understand yeah but that the argument is only saying na the ha ah, ha argument keh raha hai gesturing ho rahi hai which is aligned ha aur english speakers mein swaying is aligned and the hmm. point was ki bodily movement se pata lagta hai so are we specifically concerned ki swaying hi honi chahiye is the argument really contingent ki swaying has to be aligned not any other bodily movement no nahi no. argument mein aisa koi उनमें नहीं ऑप्शन and then you like ya kaun sa choose karu kaun sa na choose karu hmm okay so negation it is a logical process of course some people intuitively solve a lot of questions but this is a logical way conscious way of solving assumption questions uh cj i get it where i was wrong because i applied this negation incorrectly Yeah. even if i i understood that sweep forward but yeah i mean negation galat tha uske baad agar negation sahi bhi ho jayega tab bhi uh, you are not there in terms of ki the bodily movement specific bodily movement kaun si hai wo important nahi hai argument ke liye hmm hmm baat hai ki english speakers bhi ek tarah se aligned hai apni language se in terms of swaying amara speakers is also aligned in terms of gesturing अब हमारा स्पीकर में स्विंग नहीं हो रही है उससे आर्गुमेंट ब्रेक डाउन नहीं हो जाएगा राइट या 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 ठीक है सो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट बी anybody so shivangi does it make sense to you by say by the way your intuition is was correct <laughs> yeah but then i didn't understand why the negation i why it was wrong this okay. link was in land okay i say see okay option b anyone so option b is saying that most people mentally visualize time as running either forward or backward so it's not telling us uh, specifically that it should be in line with their language the event with the body I mean, body movement with their with their with the event with that i mean visualizing time meaning past or future kind of acha acha past ki baat hi nahi kar raha wo okay okay aap keh rahe ho ki wo ye nahi keh raha past is forward and that's what you are saying so basically what this option is saying that firstly is talking about most okay so most people mentally visualize time as running either forward or backward so 
वन सेकेंड वन सेकेंड लेट मी करेक्ट ओके सो सॉरी आई 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 वॉज लाइक आई वॉज नॉट मेकिंग द राइट सेंस प्रीवियसली सो दिस ऑप्शन इज सींग दैट मोस्ट पीपल विल बी इन लाइन विथ योर फॉरवर्ड और बैकवर्ड सो दे कैन मेंटली विजुअलाइज टाइम बट इट इट्स नॉट सींग दैट ऑल द पीपल Okay, so let's say if I make it all the people, then. Ab uh, see, there is one thing. There is a gap here. Mentally visualize time. I am thinking that in the direction of, uh, in the direction of their bodily movement. Okay. ठीक है तो वो आप कह रहे हो दिस इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन मेंटली विजुअलाइजिंग टाइम एंड बॉडीली मूवमेंट कैसे हो रही है उनकी हां सो बेसिकली दिस इज एसेंशियली सेइंग दैट मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल आर एबल टू मेंटली विजुअलाइज अ देयर पास्ट और फ्यूचर इन द डायरेक्शन ऑफ देयर बॉडीली मूवमेंट्स रनिंग इदर रनिंग फॉरवर्ड और बैकवर्ड ओके आई थिंक अभी आई थिंक मिक्स अप हो रही है कुछ चीजें आई एम आल्सो थिंकिंग दिस इज या या रोचक सो हियर मींस इट इज विजुअलाइजेशन ऑफ द टाइम एज फॉरवर्ड और बैकवर्ड बट देयर इज नो कोरिलेशन विद द लैंग्वेज दे स्पीक एंड द कंक्लूजन इज रिलेटिंग द लैंग्वेज विद द means how means people visualize time hmm it's just visualizing the time forward or backward hmm so this okay. does not help hmm so it is not connecting visualization with the language just saying you visualize aise hi karte hain yeah visualize hi karte hain bas ha visualize aise karte hain forward ya back but yeah yeah related to the language that they speak that's not option b is talking about so it doesn't yeah. even support the argument ठीक है तो मतलब एक तो ये वैलिड पॉइंट है कि इट्स तो जस्ट सेइंग कि हाउ दे मेंटली विजुअलाइज इट इधर बैकवर्ड और फॉरवर्ड बट इज इट रियली कनेक्टेड विद द लैंग्वेज आर्गुमेंट इज कंसर्न कि लैंग्वेज हैज एन इम्पैक्ट ऑन मेंटल विजुअलाइजेशन सो जस्ट सेइंग कि मेंटल विजुअलाइजेशन ऐसा होता है तो एंड साथ में अगेन that doesn't impact this another aspect is ki it's saying most people forward backward karte hain matlab let's say all bhi karte the to forward backward hota hai koi sideways nahi karta right something like that ki right let's say isko main all kar deta hu iska matlab hai everybody visualizes time as backward or forward ki koi aise nahi samajhta left right aur koi left right samajh bhi leta to usse kya problem thi hai right hume matlab as long as the लैंग्वेज के हिसाब से भी वो लेफ्ट राइट हो राइट डजेंट मैटर सर्ट ऑफ हाउ मेनी पीपल सर्ट ऑफ विजुअलाइज इट इज फॉरवर्ड बैकवर्ड सो दिस इज नॉट रेलिवेंट ओके ऑप्शन सी option c says that not all english and amira speakers tend to sway or gesture forward or backward when discussing the present so here it is talking about the movement of these speakers for the word present which which is a new information which has not been presented in the argument we have yeah. only talked about past or future yeah um it is kind of irrelevant because uh though it is a, a measure of time but here we are trying to prove for future and past and if that is aligned to agar present bhi aa jata hai to aur confusion ho jayega aisa confusion ho jayega isliye relevant hai प्रेजेंट का देखो सिंपल है कि प्रेजेंट के बारे में दिया नहीं हुआ तो कि वो लैंग्वेज में विजुलाइज कैसा है हाउ इज प्रेजेंट विजुलाइज इन द लैंग्वेज दैट इज नॉट इवन गिवन या वंस यू गेट टू टॉकिंग अबाउट प्रेजेंट कि प्रेजेंट में ये होता है या नहीं होता बट 
we don't know how that will impact the argument because we don't know how present is visualized in the language right yeah right and the lang- and the argument is about language having an impact on visualization in bodily movements right yeah. so this is not relevant Okay, option D. How people move when discussing the future correlates to some extent with how they mentally visualize time. Hmm. This is like in the wording only, I feel they're just talking about one aspect firstly the future uh then it correlates to some extent some is the word which is alarming me with how they mentally visualize time mm-hmm. but this this does not feel like an assumption but it feels like feels like the reasoning only ki, you know they're saying that people move might correlate to how they mentally visualize time. Mm-hmm. So you're saying doesn't support also? Yeah, it it's not an assumption. Uh, I'm just trying to read it again and make some Take sense. Your Take your time. Ria? So, uh, I, it's not adding new information. It's definitely supporting the uh, conclusion though. No, no. If it is not adding new information, how can it support? So, it's stating that people move when discussing the future is correlated to how they visualize time. So it is talking about uh, the language one speaks and how it affects one visualizes time. So, so that... Ek, ek hmm. to theoretical discussion karte you are saying it's not adding any information, but it supports. Yeah. Um, how can something support you without saying anything new? You know everything before. How did that support come from? But support means increasing the belief. Correct. If it is not saying anything new, how will it increase the belief? If it is just saying what you already know. So, in the argument, the entire uh, premise, the question is here, we are specifically talking about English and IMRA speakers. Right? And in option D, we have made a generalized statement if I have to say how people are correlating future to some extent with how they visualize time. That is the new thing that maybe it's adding. Option D is adding them. You're saying it's adding new information. Because in my mind uh, the context is the same but the change is in the uh, addition of people whereas in the passage we talked about IMRI and English speakers. So here we are making a sort of broad statement a, a general generalized statement in the D. People view the future ko correlates with how they visualize time whereas in the passage we are talking about two specific groups only English and IMRI. So D yeah. is only adding the uh, the group which is the new information. अच्छा तो नहीं इनफॉरमेशन है तो आप कह रहे हो सपोर्ट कर रहा है कंक्लुशन को सपोर्ट कर रहा है या कैसे सपोर्ट कर रहा है सो बॉडीली मूवमेंट्स जो कंक्लुशन है हमारा वो सजेस्ट कर रहा है कि लैंग्वेज जो एक इंसान बोल रहा है या जो ग्रुप बोल रहा है वो अफेक्ट करता है कि आप टाइम कैसे विजुअलाइज कर रहे हो दैट इज अ कंक्लूजन राइट बेसिस व्हाटएवर वी रीड अबव अबाउट अबाउट इंग्लिश एंड आई एम आर स्पीकर्स और ऑप्शन डी ये ही कह रहा है कि व्हेन यू आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट फ्यूचर दैट इज व्हेन यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट फ्यूचर यू आर रिलेटिंग इट विद हाउ यू आर मेंटली विजुलाइजिंग टाइम व्हिच इज व्हाट आवर कंक्लूजन इज आल्सो सेइंग ओके 
तो फिर आगे तो इट इज इट इज एन एजम्पन क्या मतलब It is an assumption. Yes, sir. Because when I when I negate it, it's breaking the conclusion. What negation is that? How people move when discussing the future do not correlate with how they mentally visualize time. Does not correlate. It does not correlate. And this is not there. You are removing this. Yeah. Okay. How people move when discussing the future does not correlate with how they mentally visualize time. ठीक है इससे क्या होगा? But our conclusion is saying otherwise. Our conclusion is saying that bodily movements. ये ही बताते हैं कि जैसे आप जिस लैंग्वेज में आप बात कर रहे हो उसी वो अफेक्ट करता है टाइम कैसे विजुलाइज कर रहे हो तो इट्स द नेगेशन इज ब्रेकिंग द कंक्लूजन कंक्लूजन इज अबाउट लैंग्वेज इंपैक्टिंग मेंटल विजुलाइजेशन नॉट मूवमेंट कंक्लूजन तो ये है ना हमारा या तो आई एम नॉट श्योर कि कैसे ब्रेक डाउन कर रहे हैं तो कंक्लूजन है कि लैंग्वेज कैसे अफेक्ट कर रहा है आप टाइम कैसे विजुलाइज कर रहे हो राइट ये हमारा कंक्लूजन और हमारा निगेशन है ओके ठीक है टाइम निगेशन है सर कि जैसे आप मूव कर रहे हो जब आप फ्यूचर की बात कर रहे हो उसका कोई कोरिलेशन नहीं है आप टाइम को कैसे विजुलाइज कर रहे हो करेक्ट तो ये अपोज कर रहे हैं हमारे कंक्लूजन को हमारा कंक्लूजन कह रहा है कि जो हम लैंग्वेज बात कर रहे हैं वो हमारा टाइम का विजुलाइज करने का वो उसको अफेक्ट कर रहा है राइट How we are visualizing time mentally, our language is co affect kar raha. That's what the conclusion is saying, and D is opposing that. मतलब the negation of D. कैसे oppose कर रहा? वो नहीं समझा रहा. आप बार बार बोलते रहोगे कि oppose कर रहा. And in which way is it opposing? But negation तो opposite बोल रहा ना sir कि हम जब future की बात कर रहे हैं. Language. जब हम. Hold on. वो language की बात नहीं कर रहा आपका negation. Conclusion is about language, or is not about language. Negation is uh, how movement ki baat kar raha time se. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, in the interest of time. I'll explain this. So this is the answer. Uh, negation, by the way, is right. Because when we say how people move, how people move correlates to some extent. So, little extent is there. And if you say, no, no, this is not true, and it becomes that there is no extent. There is absolutely no relation. So, so negation, this will go away. It will. purely be there is absolutely no correlation so does not correlate so the negation is correct now how this negation how this negation breaks down the argument to understand that you need to understand the jump in the argument if you look at the premises the support is between how it is described in the language to bodily movements suddenly the conclusion talks about language but not with bodily movements language has an impact on mental visualization the premises were about language impacting bodily movements the conclusion is about language impacting mental visualization 
So the author is making that jump. The mental visualization, so the bodily movements happen because of this mental visualization. Because if you break that link, then we cannot arrive at the conclusion. Okay, the language affects mental visualization. Because the premises were about language impacts bodily movements. Right? Only if we assume that bodily movements are related to mental visualization can we arrive at the conclusion. And if we break that, that actually bodily movements have no relation with mental visualization, then on the basis of the premises, which were about language impacting bodily movements, we cannot arrive at the conclusion that the language affects mental visualization. Okay, so option D is the answer. So CJ, this is essentially bridging gap between premise and conclusion. Yeah, yeah. So every assumption does that. Mm -hmm. But the point is, how do you know that? So only sort of, okay, in some cases, of course, it's in this case, for example, I can simply explain that it was just bodily movement throughout and now it's mental visualization. So you can see there is a jump. So here, if you can see that jump, you don't necessarily need to use negation. Of course, if negation will still work regardless of that. But in other cases, the jumps are not as clear as in this question. Mm -hmm. Okay, in that case, without negation, you, for example, Akansha had a sort of, some was alarming for her, right? But some is extremely good in terms of negation you get, as soon as you negate some you arrive at there is absolutely no relation which is brilliant <laughs> now it perfectly breaks down the argument right yes yeah make sense Akansha yeah I was in the initial read I felt that this is like restating the argument, like same cheesy baat kar rahe, correlation ka. Mm. Now I kind of understand that, you know, it if negated, uh, this like totally destroys the yeah. argument and I did not see the jump as well. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, Ismail is discussing hai... So that discussing must be happening in some language only, right? Which like how people, option D mein, means how people move when discussing the future. Yeah, I'm talking about that bodily movement is related to the visualization of the time only, right? But the conclusion says language affects the mental visualization. So the word here, like when discussing, if somebody, if people are discussing, so then definitely it involves some kind of language to discuss, right? Okay. So wo bhi to, malab, main agree kar ki it's, it supports the conclusion, but mere dimag mein ek wo cheez bhi aiti, jo discussion hai, wo bhi to kisi language mein hi hoga na. It will definitely support that language also part, means plays the part in the visualization of the time along with the movement. So we isko keval is cheez tak restrict kare ki option D is only telling that movement uh -huh. is no, no, no. That is not. वो, वो रहा है, how people move correlates. वो ये नहीं कह रहा कि discussion correlates. वो तो how people move when at this time when discussing the future. तो discussing the future बस हमें बता रहा है किस time की बात कर रहे हैं. वो ये नहीं कह रहा कि the discussion is related to that how people mental visualization mentally visualize time. That is just a part of a modifier in, in terms of the structure of the sentence. Hmm. The main sentence is how people move correlates to how people mentally visualize time. Yeah. Okay. Of course, we are talking about how people move when they are talking about future or past or whatever. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Option E, the researchers also examined the movements of at least some speakers of other languages. 
सो द निगेशन सो अगर और लैंग्वेज को भी देखा है तो इट्स ओके इट्स गुड थिंग मतलब इट्स नॉट न्यूट्रल अगर तुमने जितनी ज्यादा लैंग्वेज देखा उतना बेटर है तो द निगेशन विल बी कि दे हैव एग्जाम इन नान ऑफ द स्पीकर्स ऑफ अदर लैंग्वेजेस दैट डजेंट ब्रेक डाउन द आर्ग्यूमेंट बट दो लैंग्वेजेस में तो आपको कंसिस्टेंसी मिली है तो यू कैन स्टिल अराइव एट द कंक्लूजन ओके सो ऑप्शन ई निगेशन विल नॉट ब्रेक डाउन द आर्ग्यूमेंट सो ऑप्शन डी इज द आंसर so in this case there is like just mention that the examination has only happened apart from that nothing else is mentioned right ha ha ye bhi to ek ye bhi to ek reason hai nahi 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 support to hai ye jitna tum zyada examine karke aaoge utna better hai but examine karne ke baad mein result kya hai wo bhi to pata hona chahiye na wo to ek separate step hai but let's say main kahunga tumne bahut padha hai that's a good thing ab padhne ke baad sikha kitna wo ek alag step hai hi hai hamesha ke liye hmm बट ज्यादा पढ़ना इज ऑल्सो गुड थिंग अपने आप में आप ये नहीं कह सकते ज्यादा पढ़ने से क्या होता है पढ़ने के बाद मूर्ख रहते हैं दैट्स फाइन बट ज्यादा पढ़ना इज स्टिल गुड राइट सपोर्ट तो करेगा वो हाँ कितना सपोर्ट है वो एक सेपरेट क्वेश्चन बट हम जब एग्जामेशन में वेलवेट कर रहे थे जस्ट लुकिंग एट सपोर्ट कर रहा है नहीं कर रहा देन वी गो टू निगेज ओके लगाना at other times it could be changing other words also some only and all that yeah so here that is why i was i applied incorrectly at least that way yep so aapko dekhna hai ki is that really becoming false because of my state not valid right ha uh, not true okay. false the negation is just saying this is false ओके जो भी चेंजेस आपको करना है वो अकॉर्डिंगली करने हैं उसको थैंक यू ओके कूल एनी लर्निंग टेक अवे यहां फ्रॉम टुडे सेशन So I had from the second question, uh, mm -hmm. I didn't see the difference as well. So yeah, the difference swing and In option A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. I also noticed that I make like my comprehension a lot of the times. I ignore the like the small uh, differences. Like in the first question, I ignored the can afford part. and right. in this question i ignored the hand movement and body swaying ka you right. know difference even after reading the option i wouldn't have gotten that difference i know okay i see so i need to pay more attention while reading okay i see and even uh, even while doing the options i notice that if i don't pay attention while reading and i don't have the clear conclusion set in my head ke acha yahi conclusion hai like that jump wala part from you know language to bodily to mental visualization wo first read mein hi thoda sa samajh like set ho jana chahiye tha but right. wo options read karne ke baad mein aur confused ho jati hai and nahi set hota wo right right that is the difference that i notice between your approach and my approach to things is your very clear when it comes to the conclusion you don't get confused ki conclusion kya hai main options dekh ke aur confused ho jati thi yeah. kabhi kabhi right right hmm so isme basic the thought process hai tha ki jitna pad liya hai so i don't go to the options unless they have a strong hold over the argument being very clear ki ye conclusion supported by this right so 
तो नॉर्मली जैसे इफ यू आर डिपेंडिंग अपॉन योर स्किल लेवल तो बहुत सारे लोगों का जैसे लेट से इजी क्वेश्चंस पे तो अपने आप नेचुरली स्ट्रांग होल्ड बन जाता है एज ए रीड बिकॉज जस्ट सो बट एज द क्वेश्चन बिकम मोर एंड मोर डिफिकल्ट द होल्ड इज नॉट स्ट्रॉन्ग बट दे डोंट हैव अ प्रोसेस दे डोंट हैव दिस कॉन्शियस अवेयरनेस की होल्ड स्ट्रॉन्ग नहीं है तो देन आई नीड टू स्पेंड लिटल मोर टाइम टू रियली बिल्ड माई होल्ड ओवर इट दे जस्ट कीप गोइंग एट देर रेगुलर पेस तो वहां पर देन दे स्टार्ट फेसिंग डिफिकल्टीज नहीं होता है क्यों अप्लाई नहीं होता कॉन्शियसली ट्राई नहीं कर रहे करने ट्राई नहीं कर रहे बिकॉज यू वांट टू गेट डन एज फास्ट एज पॉसिबल यू नो एक फर्स्ट रीड में ही इज इज दैट हेल्पिंग यू गेट डन एज फास्ट एज पॉसिबल दैट इज टेकिंग लॉन्गर इट्स हैविंग द ऑपोजिट इफेक्ट then why are you still not changing abhi puri conviction bhi nahi aayi hai usme theek hai abhi thokre aur khani hai so tab eventually jab clear ho jayega ki ye ek hi rasta bacha hai karna hai ya nahi karna that is the only thing ki agar nahi karenge to nahi hoga then you will do it hmm abhi wo conviction puri nahi hai resistance zyada hai conviction kam hai jab resistance conviction se kam ho jayegi then you will do it मीनिंग एन एवरीथिंग आई रियलाइज दैट इट वॉज इन दैट स्ट्रॉन्ग दैट वाई डिड आई रिजेक्ट इट एंड so i could find the right one but i couldn't reject the wrong ones for the right reason in right. both the versions i realized right and uh uh just to say Okay, uh, Rochak. I'm so sorry. Actually, my speaker started playing some sound, and I stopped. Okay, no problem. And um, ah, uh, yeah. So can this... make sure the face is clearly visible for the camera. I can still hear it. I'm so sorry. Let Rochak, me fix it. I'll just be back. I can just hear. Yeah, Rochak. Sir, in the first question, me like. in the conclusion right that the, therefore if the means semicolon ke baad mein ye hai ki the lower the income the higher the annual percentage so it it has means the statement says that has the reversal effect of federal income tax aur uske baad mein wo semicolon hai right semicolon so, hai colon ha ah, sorry colon hai to wo मतलब मुझे कंफ्यूजन रहा कि ये रिवर्सल इफेक्ट बता रहा है वेदर इट इज टेलिंग अबाउट द रिवर्सल बात हुई थी लास्ट सेशन में इसके ऊपर हमारी बात हो चुकी है लास्ट सेशन इफ यू जस्ट गो बैक टू द रिकॉर्डिंग ऑफ द फर्स्ट सेशन वी हैड ऑन सीआर ओके ओके चलो थैंक यू अम कैन आई जस्ट कंटिन्यू सॉरी आई गुड हियर सम वीडियोस हां कैन आई कंटिन्यू Yeah, yeah. Uh, so basically this was that i couldn't reject the wrong answers uh, so i actually had this concern that while you were doing it in time uh, environment uh, how do you take out that much time where you are like you know rejecting it also and that's how your technique is right 
because I just find the right answer. But I think that is the reason why I do difficult questions or sometimes medium questions are all. Um, so how to build a systematic way of doing it also in a timed environment? I think that is something that I still haven't mastered yet. They would time to so, matlab... अगर राइट अप्रोच को आप ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम प्रैक्टिस करते रहोगे तो उस टाइम आपका बेटर होने लग जाएगा मतलब दैट दैट इज ट्रू फॉर एवरी फील्ड आपको कि लेट्स से आपको कोई लेट्स से आपको कोई फुटबॉल हिट करने को बोल रहा है वो कह रहा है ऐसे हिट करनी है और आप कह रहे हो कि रुको जाए मैं भाग रही हूं तब मैं इतना ध्यान दूंगी मुझे ऐसे हिट करनी है तो मैं हिट कर ही नहीं पाऊंगा सामने से कोई ले जाएगा तो फिर नॉट फिर वैसे जैसे करनी करते रहो बट धीरे 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 पहले आप पहले उसको स्टेशनरी रख के तो वैसे हिट करना सीखो स्टेशनरी हिट अब कंसिस्टेंटली आप सही हिट करते हो फिर उसके बाद ठीक है अब थोड़ी स्पीड पे कोई भागते भागते आ रहा है तब आप हिट कर पा रहे हो फिर थोड़ी और स्पीड पे भागते भागते आ रहे हैं फिर आप हिट पा रहे हो इवेंचुअली जाके ऐसे स्टेज पे पहुंचे कि हाँ इन अ मैच इन्वायरमेंट यू कैन हिट दैट दैट वे आप पहले सोचोगे मैच इन्वायरमेंट में कैसे हिट करूंगी ये तो मैं इतना धीरे हिट करना पड़ रहा है मुझे फिर तो नहीं कर पाओगे so does it mean like uh, not having a timer right now and just solving the questions with the right technique without the pressure of time but making sure the technique is right हमेशा यहां हर स्टेज में ऐसे ही होता है कि पहले टेक्निक को इंश्योर करते हैं कि आपको डांस स्टेप सही आने चाहिए आपको कोई डांस स्टेप सही आए ना आए मुझे तो 2 मिनट में पूरा डांस कंप्लीट करना है ओके तो डांस स्टेप सही करने के चक्कर में मेरे को तो 10 मिनट लग जाते हैं इसमें <laughs> मत करो डांस स्टेप सही <laughs> क्या कर सकते <laughs> हर डोमेन में ऐसा होता है इट इज नॉट स्पेसिफिक टू द जी मैट मैं इसलिए भी आंसर डायरेक्टली नहीं देता हूं बिकॉज़ इट्स नॉट कि ये मेरा आंसर है इस जी मैट के लिए इट इज ट्रू फॉर एवरी डोमेन ऑफ लाइफ राइट गॉट या या फिर शुरू PSCJ. So three learnings from today's session. First, I did not know about uh, necessary versus sufficient assumption. That was first. Second was that uh, linkage from previous lines in that Tamara and English speaker that arriving at a conclusion before reading it. So that linking and reading between the lines and linking from previous lines and arriving at logical conclusion. That was second and third was. Oh, uh, I applied negation technique incorrectly. So these are like three learnings from today's session. Thank you for that. Okay, cool. Uh, there we conclude. So we'll meet next weekend. Till then, have good days. Have a good Sunday. Take care. Bye. Thank you, Sujay. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Bye. Have a good day. Have Bye. a good day. Bye.